on a Friday night, I would like make a really bad list of directions and at nine o'clock, I'd take the top down on the Miata and like head out into the night, sort of to get lost. It's amazing I didn't get shot or killed. My name is Frank Bryan. This is a 1986 Ferrari 328 GTS. So in, uh, right after college in 2005, um, I moved to Austin and uh, I bought a Miata for $1,500. And uh, the Miata was great, and you know, uh, I, it was a great time in my life, but I was super single, and I didn't have a lot of friends. And so I got uh, one of those, you know, like paper atlases, and I would literally sit there and flip page. I don't know if you've ever seen one, but it like literally gives you like the road detail. It's way better than Google Maps. And I would like flip through page by page and like look for like squiggly lines. And so, like, you know, on a Friday night, I would like make a really bad list of directions and at nine o'clock, I'd take the top down on the Miata and like head out into the night, sort of to get lost, um, you know, down county roads and cattle guards and low water crossing. It's amazing I didn't get shot or killed. But, uh, you know, there in that experience, I really found like a lot of, you know, obvious joy from just be being out there in it, but also a lot of sort of peace in terms of, you know, freedom from, you know, all the factors that, you know, pull at us externally and also internally. And so pretty much since then, you know, my relationship to cars has been iterating on, on that kind of realization and experience. And so uh, in 2014, I, you know, I bought a 993, which was great and was, you know, uh, really the kind of the ultimate road trip car. I took it all over. Um, the American West and up and down uh, the California coast and to Albuquerque and up the mountains and you know took it skiing and just had an unbelievable you know time in that car and uh, there was another period I was going through sort of a career transition and I was trying to get married and I sort of said okay and I was trying to move to California I said okay if I can pull all that off I'm gonna you know buy myself another car and so I did the whole, the whole bring a trailer thing where you're like checking that and you're looking at stuff. Um, I really wanted to buy like an MGA and uh, looked at one and was going to buy one. I told the guy, hey, I'm going to make a deposit. And the next day he was like, oh, we sold it. I think he sold it out from under me. Um, and then I fell in love with like a, uh, one of those Datsun Roadsters. And there was a guy in Houston that had the one you want, the low windshield with the big engine and uh, the competition package with the Makuni carbs and the springs and the, those American racing wheels, little four spoke ones, it was sick. But, you know, I drove in, I don't know if the roads around, you know, where we would drive it really bad, but I just like couldn't get, I just was like, oh, I, I just don't like driving this car. And I felt bad because I wanted it and told him I was gonna buy it. And then I'd always dreamed of, you know, getting a 355, you know, that's sort of like the, the dream car. And, you know, I knew kind of all the misery in terms of keeping them, the maintenance and the engine out and everything. And I read somewhere that, oh, the 328 is the most reliable Ferrari. And that was sort of the chink in the armor. And I was like, you know, it was out of my price range. And I was like, okay, you know, and you sort of talk yourself into things like, I could get this, yeah. So I went, I, in Houston, I found one that was on consignment and uh, we, um, so I sort of faked enough interest to go get a look at it and take it for a test drive. It was red, you know, and like the joke, you don't want to get a red Ferrari. And I got in it and like, I was like, oh my God, I have to have this car. And even like when you, when you drive it, the, you can see the fenders and those red fenders. I was like, ah, oh, I have to have this. I completely lost it. And I managed to not buy that car on the spot. I found a white one uh, just down the street. I lived in Texas at the time, but I found a white one here in Southern California got them on the phone, they were like, we just sold it. And I like freaked out, because I was like, I have to have a white 328, you know, right now. And on, you know how there's like, like all the different car sites, there's like Autotrader and cars.com, but then you get down to like the fourth or fifth one and it's like some weird site that you've never heard of. Oh, I found a white one in Arizona and it was like, I don't even know if this is a scam. You know, I fill that little form, you know, hey, you know, I'm interested in your car. This guy calls me, I get him on the phone, I have like a two hour conversation with him. And he's like telling me about it and he's got the binder and it's the fifth owner and he's telling me all this stuff about what a weirdo he is and you know, he, he's taking care of it. And I like sent him 500 bucks like on the spot. I was like, look, here's, here's a deposit. 
you know, and did the whole, um, you know, PPI and picked it up, um, you know, and then really the, the best part was I bought it in Phoenix and it, I had just, I was getting married. I just sort of figured out I was going to bring the car instead of to Texas. I brought it to California. And so I drove it home from Phoenix. And at this time still, I had the paper atlas, this time a California paper atlas, and I cut, uh, you know, I screamed down I-10 out of Phoenix, and then in Palm Desert, you can cut, uh, you can cut off the freeway and go up over through Hemet and then down through the Palms to Pines Highway uh, into San Luis Obispo. And I still remember, you know, being on the roads there and like, you know, passing somebody in a wide spot in the road and thinking like, don't be the guy that wrecks his vintage Ferrari on the way home from purchasing. I managed, to, I managed to get it home in one piece and it's just, you know, it's been an unbelievable experience since then. It's a great car to drive and, um, and really it's just an extension of the fun that I had in my Miata, you know. I don't think of it as like a Corvette or a muscle car, it's just like a really freaking cool Miata. It revs to 8,000 RPMs, which is awesome. Um, it's a little 3.2 liter V8, um, and it's got the gated shifter, which is cool. And, um, you know, I would say the shifter from a modern sense is not that great. It's real notchy, and um, the gears are really long, and it's not something that you shift real fast. But, you know, from a kind of from a joy of operation, it's. Uh, it's unbelievable, and um, you just have to you have to be really careful with second gear. Second gear on 308s and 328s is sort of the problem child. So you've got to warm it up, and, and once the yeah once the transmission gets warmed up, then you can sort of use second gear, and the whole the whole transmission sort of gets a little easier to work with. But cold, it's it's uh, yeah, it's a little finicky. I mean, it's absolutely too. I mean, you don't have ABS, so you can absolutely lock it up. It's got little skinny tires. It's got 205s in the front and 225s in the back, so it's like Miata tires. Um, so you can absolutely lock it up, which you don't want to do. Um, so, you know, I would say that, I mean, everything about the car, you have to, it, you know, it rewards a sort of lifetime of driving experience because, you know, you need to be very effective in matching revs. You need to be very effective in making sure that you don't overuse the suspension or the brakes um, because it's a mid-engine car It'll rotate, um, you know, the way its handling characteristics are, it, uh, if you can lean it over, you know, onto the suspension and load up the suspension, you can then sort of lean on it. It's not gonna come around, but if you pitch it or if you do, you know, an uneven maneuver, it'll absolutely swap ends on you. And then without power steering, there's no like drifting, you're like, you know, you're saving the car. I mean, you're, you know, doing everything you can not to, uh, you know, not to wreck it. I think it's it's an event, you know. Um, it doesn't provide you a lot of creature comforts. It vibrates and resonates, and you know you can't hear yourself talk. You can't listen to music, um, but it's an event to drive, you know. It um, uh, so you know for me, every time I get in it, it's like okay, this is gonna be a big deal. I'm gonna be in a good mood. I'm gonna have a great time, you know. It takes the sort of passive transportation element out of driving because you're like look I'm driving this to drive it I'm not driving it to go anywhere or do anything I mean there's a big difference between the modern supercar crowd and the you know in the 308 crowd um, you know I think that everything you know every stereotype you could make of sort of modern Ferrari owners you don't really see that um, in, in, in the older cars or in this sort of era of cars. Um, you know, I would say the community that I hang out, because we, in the pandemic, we go to a lot of cars and coffees. I mean, we, I, I used to maybe go to a few a year, and now we probably go to three a month. Um, I've got my little crew. And I really like the sort of kind of JDM and sort of Euro crowd. Um, you know, there are definitely some of the more like kind of supercar focused meets that are cool. But the, you know, the community, um, you know, there's like the Cars and Coffee Classics in Anaheim. Um, you know, there's the Brecky Car Club. I mean, a lot of the folks there um, I really like, and that's a, you know, that's a really good vibe. Um, and I don't feel, you know, close to or a part of the sort of modern supercar community. I think that's kind of a different crowd, and, and they, have a, they have a great time, and they certainly have a lot of fun. It's a car that commands a lot of respect because, um, I mean, every time I drive it, I think 
I do not want to end up as like an internet meme of like the guy who's like with his wrecked car, like backed into an Armco, you know, hey, like don't want to be that guy. And so, you know, so I, I keep that in mind and um, you can push this car pretty hard and it handles really well and it will do what you want. Um, so it's, it's an unbelievable back road car, but you know, I would say it commands a lot of respect. You don't want to let it bite you. You don't want to, you know, um, try and, you know, uh, you know, power slide or drift or anything like that. You want to keep it underneath you because I found that with this car, when things go bad, they go bad really quickly. And uh, so, you know, I've been fortunate only to have one, I would say, fairly mild uh, experience where I scared myself a little, but otherwise I've had a really great time with it. DC Motorcars is a leading luxury and exotic car retailer in Orange County. Their inventory is full of brands like Ferrari, Fiat, Mercedes-Benz, and an assortment of American muscle cars. They also offer competitive financing and friendly service. The staff are extremely helpful and courteous, and if you have any questions or are looking to buy your next car, be sure to visit them at 4530 East La Palma in Anaheim Hills. Or give them a call at 714-695-0102. The number is 714-695-0102. Are you looking to save hundreds on your homeowners and auto insurance? Well, then I highly recommend Sammy Kotob with Farmers Insurance. He's walked me through the entire process and actually explained to me the coverages on my policy and answered any questions that I had thoroughly. He's helped me save hundreds, and I know he can do the same for you as well. Call him today at 562-691-9100. The number is 562-691-9100.